Hi everyone, it's Barbara and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am sharing how I took some everyday Dollar Tree kitchen items and gave them a high-end look using the Cricut Joy and Easy Press 2. I want to take this opportunity to thank Cricut for sponsoring today's video. For project number one, I am starting off with these glass salt and pepper shakers from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to remove the lids and set those to the side because I want to keep them just as they are. I took some painter's tape and wrapped the top part of the rim of each of these um, salt and pepper shakers and closed that off to make sure that I don't get any paint inside of them because I want to be able to use them. I then gave them two thin coats, allowing each coat to dry before I proceeded to the next coat of Waverly White chalk paint, and I also made sure that I painted the bottom. Because I am going to be using these, I wanted to protect that chalk paint, so I went over that with some matte Mod Podge and made sure that that completely dried before adding any of my vinyl. While the Mod Podge is drying, I went over to Cricut Design Space, which is super easy to use, and there are so many tutorials on YouTube and official Cricut's YouTube channel that you can learn how to use the Design Space. And I'm just going to make a simple S and P, and you can size these any way you want, as tall or as wide as you need them. And you can pick so many different fonts to choose from. After that Mod Podge has dried, I can then remove my painter's tape and get ready to apply my decals. What I love about the Cricut Joy is that you can use the permanent vinyl on a mat, or you can also use the smart vinyl, which does not require a mat. I'm going to cut this down to a more manageable size and I will be saving those smaller pieces that I cut off just in case I decide I want to make something small like these items here. After you weed that out, you just apply your transfer tape on top of your decal and burnish it down to make sure that your decal sticks to the transfer tape. Then you can apply it to your item and burnish it once again to remove the transfer tape. I'll do the exact same thing for the P, and then I can reapply my lids, and these salt and pepper shakers are finished. They are so beautiful. This was such a simple DIY, but I love how they turned out. You could also, if you wanted to give them a distressed look, you could take some sandpaper and go over your paint, but I like them just as they are. Let me know what you think of project number one. For project number two, I will be making two pot holders. I'm going to start off in my Cricut design space and select an image. They have, uh, Cricut has a design space access subscription. I believe it's $9.99 a month, and it provides you with so many different images that you can use. The first image that I chose was a tractor, and what I love about the design space is that you can change the shape, you can change the height and the width separately to get the design that you are looking for. Once I have my tractor sized to what I want it to be, and I did make sure that I measured my pot holders so that I would know the width and the height of my entire decal. I'm going to go in and choose a font for farm life. Now, I do end up changing this font to match more of the other fonts that I'm using in all of today's projects. Then I can go in and line them up and make sure that I have them separated from the picture like I want them to. And then I can go in and highlight that and go to align and center horizontally so that everything will be centered. Then I can go in and group them together and attach them together so that they will print as one decal. Then I'm going to make a second decal and I decided I wanted to use a chicken. And again, the um, subscription through Cricut, you have so many choices and so many designs that you can choose from. You can also upload your own images to use those as well. Once I have the chicken picked out that I want to use, I can then go in and add in my text. And what I love about this is I wanted Farm Fresh at the top, 
and then I wanted eggs at the bottom, but I wanted them to have a different size. So you can size them differently, and you can also change the spacing between the letters. So if you feel like farm fresh, the letters are spaced too far apart, you can go in and decrease the width between each of the letters. Once I have the wording on there like I want it and get it in the general area that I want it, I can go in and again highlight that, align it, and center it horizontally so that everything will be centered. Then I can group it and attach it, and then I can go in and make it. Once I press make it, it will give you all the options of what type of um, material that you're going to be printing on. In this particular case, I will be printing on a mat and I'm going to be printing iron on vinyl. So when you're doing iron, iron on, you want to make sure that you mirror your image so that when you print it out, the decal will actually go onto the fabric. Once I have, um, go ahead and select make it, I can go in and select my material and then I can feed it into my machine. So when you are weeding this, everything is going to be backwards. So your design is going to stay on the glossy part at the bottom of your um, paper. And that's why you wanted to mirror it so that when you put it onto your fabric, it's actually gonna be facing up. And this is super easy to weed. It's actually easier to weed than permanent vital. And I just love that once I weed it, just the image just comes to life. It's so beautiful. Then I can go in and cut the two pieces apart because it did print it very closely. So I just want to make sure that I'm careful and that I don't cut um, any of my decals. And once I have those separated, I can go in and then apply them to my pot holders. And again, I made sure that I was very careful not to cut my image. So I will be using two of Dollar Tree's pot holders, and you get two for a dollar. And you want to make sure that you have any of the lint removed and your tags removed. Now, the next part, I put cardstock down, but that's not necessary. And then I put butcher paper down, and I am just warming up the mat, getting it ready to apply the iron on vinyl. So... The reason I used cardstock and butcher paper, you guys, is because before this project, I was using infusible ink. So really, this is not necessary. But I did go ahead and put that down, and I set it at 315 degrees for 30 seconds. And you can go to Cricut's um, heat press guide, and it will tell you exactly how long and what temperature and how much pressure to apply. You want to make sure you are very careful because it is hot and I'm going to flip that over and then I can reapply the easy press and I'm using the easy press too and I am going to apply that at 315 degrees for 15 more seconds. Let that cool off before you remove the plastic portion above your decal and then this little pot holder is finished and it is so beautiful. I absolutely love how these pot holders turned out. And that is what I love about Cricut Design Space is that you can come up with so many ideas on your own and create your own designs. I absolutely think these turned out so gorgeous and so high end. Let me know what you think of these Farmhouse Dollar Tree pot holders. Also, if this is your first time visiting my channel and you are enjoying today's video, I would love for you to click that subscribe button and the notification bell so YouTube will notify you the next time I upload a new video. And to all my current subscribers, thank you so much. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. For project number three, I'm going to be making some coasters. Now, Cricut um, was kind enough to send me these blank coasters, and I'm going to be using the infusible ink on these. So I went into the design space, and in this particular case, I used designs that were already made. I just put them on circles, and I sized the circles to the diameter of the coasters, which I believe was 3.6 in diameter. And then I'm going to print this out, and I am going to print it on a mat, and I am using the infusible ink. So when you also want to make sure that you mirror this, because again, when you apply this to the coaster, you're going to be applying it ink side down. So you want to make sure that everything is mirrored. 
when you apply your infusible ink to the mat, you're going to have this colored portion facing up and it does look dull, but I promise once you iron it on, it is very vibrant and very beautiful. While that is cutting out, they do provide you in the coaster set with a lint-free cloth and you can take this cloth and make sure that those coasters are nice and free from any debris and make sure there's nothing on there that would prevent the ink from going onto the coaster. So you want to make sure you don't have any lotion or oils or anything like that on your hands. Then you can weed this out and again this is very easy to weed and I'm going to do that for all four pieces or for all four of the decals that I made. So as you can see here on the left hand side, as I was weeding these out, I decided, wow, I'm going to keep these letters that spell out blessing. I think I can reuse them. And then I just used my Cricut tweezers and applied this to a piece of the same um, material that the infusible ink comes on. And I could reuse it. I thought, geez, this would save me some money as well. So I'm going to set that to the side for later on. You're also going to need some heat resistant tape. You're going to place your ink side down on top of your coaster. And then I took the pieces and folded those over because it's already sticky. Now, if I had, um, if I could do this over again, I would make sure that I cut that plastic part where the decal is sitting on, I would cut that a little bit smaller because I had so much extra on there. I don't think that it was sitting as flat as it should be. You want to make sure you put some cardstock down because you do not want to ruin your mat. You're going to put your coasters face down and then you can put some butcher paper on top of that before you apply your easy press. Again, I went to the heat guide. It said 400 degrees at 240 seconds, and you do not apply any pressure. I should have done these individually rather than all together because I don't think it had an even enough pressure, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a minute. So when you apply your heat press and remove it, you want to make sure that you're going straight up and straight down so you don't smear that ink, and also make sure that your coasters are completely cooled off before you remove the tape. See here, it is a little bit discolored, like a, all the ink did not transfer over, but I'm okay with that because I really like the way they look. But if you are to recreate these, I would do each coaster individually. And again, make sure you let it cool completely off before you remove the tape and that glossy piece that comes with the transfer. For project number four, I started off with these bamboo spoon and bamboo turner. I got mine at Dollar General, but I do believe they have these at Dollar Tree. This is where I was going to take that infusible ink and the blessings, and I was going to apply it to the wood. Now, it probably would work, but the, when I did it, I don't know if maybe I didn't leave it on there long enough, but um, I didn't like the way it looked once I removed the transfer. So I did put some transfer tape down and I applied it on my mat with my butcher paper and my cardstock and my heat press. But once I removed it, it was just a little bit faded and it wasn't as vibrant as I wanted it to be. And it just didn't look the way I wanted it to turn out. So I decided, well, I will just paint them. I'm going to take some painter's tape and tape off the handle so that I can paint the handle only, and I'll do that for both pieces. I'm going to come in with black chalkboard craft paint, and I purchased my um, paint from Dollar General, and I'm going to paint the entire handle on all sides, including the hole that you hang the utensils up by. I'm going to be using mine for decorative purposes only, so I'm not going to worry about putting anything on there to seal that paint in. While that was drying, I did go into Design Space and print or design um, the word Farmhouse and Blessings, and I used the font Dom Casual Standard. And after I printed that out, I'm going to weed it and then put it on my transfer tape so that I can apply farmhouse to one of the utensils 
and blessings to the other utensil. And I absolutely love how this white vinyl, and I did use white permanent vinyl, um, love how it pops off of this black chalkboard paint. Once I have those decals in place and burnished down and remove my transfer tape, I felt like it needed just a little something else. So I went back into Design Space and selected an image of a chicken and an image of a rooster and sized them down so that I could apply those right under farmhouse and blessings. Now, as I pulled my transfer tape off, it did pull a little bit of the chalk paint off, so I did go in and touch that up. Once I apply my little rooster and my hen onto these utensils, these are finished, and I think they are super high-end and really beautiful, and I love how they turned out. So blessing in disguise, I'm glad that the infusible ink did not work on these because I like how this turned out even better. I hope you enjoyed this project as well. Let me know what you think. I just absolutely love the colors with the plain wood and the black and the white. And if you like that cute little sign right there at the bottom right, we are getting ready to make that in project number five and our last project for today's video. I will be using this Dollar Tree sign, which is super cute just as it is. I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing and again take my black chalkboard craft paint and give that one good coat and make sure that that has dried completely before adding any decals. I went over to Cricut Design Space and I am going to just type out farm to table and I did this separately so that I could make two smaller than form and table. Once I have everything lined up and centered and sized the way I want it to be, I can go in and print this out. I'm gonna be printing this out on some permanent vinyl. And again, I'm just going to weed that out. And you really can't see it here because it's white and you really can't see on camera, but you'll be able to see it here in just a second when I put that transfer tape on. If you're having any kind of difficulties burnishing it and the letter's not sticking, just keep burnishing it and just take your time and be patient. But for the most part, it's very easy to apply these letters to the transfer tape and fairly easy to remove that transfer tape. I'm going to set that to the side for a moment, and I found these super cute miniature type small spoons and forks at the Dollar Tree. They are so adorable. I'm going to give those two coats of my Waverly White chalk paint, and I did make sure I painted everywhere that I thought that you could see it. Then I could put my frame right back into, I mean, put the backing right back into my frame, use some hot glue and glue the spoon and the fork down. And I did choose to leave the beads and the frame in the natural wood color. And I love how this one turned out. It is so cute. I absolutely love it. I also think this would look really cute on a tiered tray. You guys, if you are interested in purchasing a Cricut, please check out my description box below for a link to Cricut. If you have a favorite in today's video, please let me know in the comment section down below because I would love to know which one is your favorite. Thank you for taking time out of your day to watch my video. Please know that I appreciate you and I thank you. Please take care and I will see you guys next time.